All right, hello guys. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, my sort of workflow for how I make my animations in Sequencer um, in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, it's a bit unorthodox, but I can basically explain it. Um, so here we go. Uh, so the first thing is how to make like a cutscene really simple uh, animation level sequence and there we go um, and then you just open it up okay and we're back so uh, the way it works is you basically just select an object in the scene. So in this case I want to animate this character. Um, there's a couple ways you can do it. I know that you can select from the outliner. Um, but the way that I do it is if you just select the thing, actor to sequencer, there we go. Um, yeah, so I have this I already have the character's name, so I know who they are. Um, in this case, this is my protagonist character, and this is my antagonist character, so definitely good to name your stuff. But you basically just go to track, a actor to sequencer, protagonist, or whatever character you want. Um, so this character already comes with a... Uh, an IK rig asset attached to it. Um, so, to basically explain my workflow, uh, I have to talk about the fact that so Unreal Engine has this feature where you can blend animations together. So I'll just show it off real quick. Um, So, okay, here it is. Walk forward. And then MM. Run forward. So these are all like de default assets that come with Unreal Engine. So if you have them, I, that's why I kind of want to use them. Uh, you'll notice nothing is going on. Uh, that's because... The, the um the control rig basically overrides the animations essentially so if you have a control rig asset uh, it will get overridden so if I just delete this oh oh it got moved back because I was using uh, let's move this guy. Okay. So you notice that you can actually blend animations together and the transition the transition is pretty smooth. Um So what you can do is you can basically make an animation that's not actually an animation. Um an example is this animation I have is not actually an animation you'll see if I just play it it's just it's just a pose but because it's an animation file or because Unreal Engine identifies this as an animation file I can blend into this pose And then I can like take this, uh, copy it over, and then you can kind of get like your own 
animations. Uh, this is for an example. This isn't really that good. I mean, going from a running to just falling down kind of doesn't work, but uh, the general idea of how I animate stuff is I just I make sort of like these key poses and you can also you can also do this where it like blends the both animations and it kind of looks like he's like crouch walking now. So that's another option. Um, but the thing I kind of want to show off is that oh I, I pretty much mentioned this earlier was that if you want to add once you add a control rig this feature pretty much goes away so what I typically do is I have another sequence sequencer file um, I can show you it I, I call it animation prototyping. And I basically just use this one sequence to make all of my like small animations. Uh, in this case, the animation right now is like the fist pound animation I was working on. So I'll show it right here. Yeah. Um, So yeah, so this animation, um, so I basically work, I have the control rig in a separate sequencer so that I don't have the issue of not being able to blend my animations. And then if you want to show you how you would like go about turning this into an uh, animation, because right now it's not an animation, um, you select your skeletal mesh and you do... Uh, bake animation sequence um, I'm just gonna go test uh, I would make a folder for you to put your animations in and then uh, the last thing to talk about is it's only gonna make the start and the end areas it's only gonna render this so you don't need to worry about anything before that just that and then click OK, you can, there's just a bunch of extra stuff, export to default. Um, so now if I, I'm going to get rid of that so I can blend my animations. Uh, I just gotta get rid of that so I can show it off. Uh, you just go to animation it, it can be weird because when you when you try to drag it in it will make like another animation slot which gets really annoying. You have to like constantly delete these. Um, Yeah, here is my animation that I just made in Sequencer. And uh, you will have this issue, so I guess one more thing I can talk about. How you notice how I try to loop this animation, and it should just loop, um, but then you get this weird, like, jagged transition that doesn't make any sense. Uh, what you can do is go to property properties um, and oh end frame offset you can also do start frame offset as well um, you kinda have to just play with the settings and then let's see there we go to that fix it
There we go. It's definitely not perfect, but um, I don't want to be here forever messing with this. I was just trying to show that um, if you have issues with it not looping, you can mess with those settings to get something slightly better looking. Another option is to duplicate the animation and have it like blend into itself. Though that can kind of mess stuff up. Yeah. That didn't. Um But yeah, that's pretty much my whole animation workflow is just you make some of like you just make a little bit of like these very generic okay looking animations um in a separate sequencer using the IK rig and then you have your second sequencer file which is mainly used for blending your animations and that way you don't have those interfering with one another um and one last option is the fact that so we can actually put in an FK IK rig onto this um yeah so you select your target um, with like the skeletal mesh and all that and you go bake to control rig um, and this is a somewhat destructive workflow because you can't really you'll notice that over here I'm going to like duplicate this animation and nothing happens so pretty much uh, once you do this you can't really go back so this is really what you would do at the very end you would be like oh I don't I wanna add a little bit more variety to this animation so on this frame I'm gonna um, make his arm go up and then you hit enter and it's like that's, yeah that's really fast um, you might want to like delete some of these frames and then you can be like right I didn't delete everything it's a tedious process because it keyframes the whole darn animation There we go. So yeah, that's one downside is that you have to deal with this mess of keyframes. Um, although I think if you want to just delete the whole row, the way I was doing it was kind of wrong. I You could have just done that, I think. Um, but yeah, that is...